Welcome back to our Smart Build implementation series. This is part four, setting up sheeting parts. So we use the term sheeting, and it's kind of a general term. Uh, even though we know you may have metal, maybe a metal panel, it may be vinyl siding or stone. Those would all go into the sheeting category. So looking at this project here, I have a standing seam panel on the roof. I have an ag panel on the walls, a stone panel here. And yeah, so we'll jump over into the setup wizard. So we'll go to settings again, setup wizard, and then we'll go into the sheeting section. So again, if you're starting with our setup and you have a generic database to begin with, it will look something like this. Uh, we have several different examples in here. You are welcome to delete any of those, or if you don't need any of these items, you can just select them and delete them out by clicking the trash can here. So just starting out and looking at, you know, maybe you have an ag panel. We'll start out with an ag panel. It's the most popular. And again, yours may be um, a different name. So if that's true, you could just come in here and say, well, mine isn't, I, I call it something a little bit different or we have our own company brand name. So you could take this ag panel, you could change the name or the description and you could change the SKU by doing this. So we have a coverage width of 36 inches and a full width of 37 and a half. And your panel may vary a bit. This is just accounting for the overlap and your drawings will actually show the overlap if you have this set up this way. The thickness, this is normally set around uh, three quarter inch just because that's a rib thickness. And again, it does show that thickness in the model. So if you see some inconsistencies or in the model, if you notice that your wall girts are kind of shining through, you can almost see a girt line. It may just be that your sheeting is not thick enough. You can increase that thickness. To, to clear those lines up. So we have a maximum length. And talking about this a bit, if you have a row former or, and you ship, ship metal to the job site, you may say that we never wanna cut metal longer than 30 feet. You could put a maximum length in here. With a maximum length, it would always cut the metal and then you could put an underlap in. So anytime that it cuts the metal, you could include another six inches. And then you can also have a minimum cut length. So with this minimum cut length, if anywhere in the job it's calling for a six inch piece, and we have a minimum cut length on here of being 10 inches, it will always cut those six inches pieces at 10 inches because maybe that's as short as your roll former or short as you could cut it. And then this extension, this could be put onto the panel. So anytime that you use a 36 inch ag panel, if the roof plane is calling for a 20 foot piece, and you say, well, we always want to extend ours two inches. You could do that in here. So the reason, and before we have a setting um, in our details tab of the job, that you could add an extension onto or a margin onto your roof sheeting. But where that gets complicated is if you're doing multiple types of roofing in a single job or from job to job, you don't want to have to go into that setting and change that extension each time, this roof margin. So we added it directly to the panel. So you could have it set up back here on the panel where each time you use this panel, it adds so many inches to the panel. So again, that's all these are. They are optional. You don't have to use those or fill them out. The supplier ID, um, if you get metal from a few different supplier companies, you can fill this out and it may be supplier ID ABC. And when you fill that out, all that does is when you're, when you're pulling a report for a job, you could have an ABC report. And if you do that, then it only includes items that are coming from with this ABC supplier ID. So again, these are all optional and they're used by some companies and, and, and not by others. So totally optional. So the unit, selling unit, lineal feet, most likely that's, that's how you'll leave that. And then the quantity one, it's an obvious one there. So the orientation would be vertical in this case, the color map is none and the bump map is ag panel. So if we were doing a textured panel, you, you may choose to have a color map in here. And we have some we have some textures in here. Depending on your brand, you could go down through here and find. So here's some central states textures that you could apply. And these have to be put per color. So this color map here, it's still going to be none on the panel. And then we'll show you how you can apply these maps on the color. And we talked about that a little bit back in the color video. So if you go back to part three and watch the colors, you can see. So that's what this is asking for. But other products like stone, you may actually apply the color map here if there are no, not multiple colors of that panel. 
So back to the metal and, and, and this ag panel here that we're focusing on. So we look at these and we could set up our ag panel exactly like this one and or, you know, use this one and, and just change the name and the SKU. And then moving on down, we have to choose what system it's part of. So the ag panel is going to be part of most likely our ag panel system that we set up. So we go ahead and add that. And in this case, I'm not going to add this to the liner panel because it is um, this is let's say this is your number one ag panel and you don't use it as a liner. So it would not be part of that system. And then where can it be used in the job? So we could select all the places that it gets used. So we could add and just select uh, any, anywhere that you want to. So I'm going to ignore liner, maybe use it for soffit, cable soffit, and we'll leave these as not choices. So we have our usages set up. We have what system it's part of. Now, since we've set up the system, when I get to the next part here on the bottom, it automatically knows um, what colors are part of that system again. So I set my cost, and if my cost is $3 per running foot, and I put a weight in, I'm just putting a bogus, bogus weight in. So we do $3 per foot, and if I, since this, this is part of this system, as soon as I populate the colors, it automatically would, would populate the colors in that system. And again, I don't have those set up, but it would populate this here on the bottom, all the colors of the ag panel. And then you could identify each each cost. Each cost could be different for each color. So that's kind of how that works. And and I could just jump back here and we'll add we'll add the black in to that system just to give you an example. So we add we we'll add the black and the blue into the ag line, ag panel system so that we can see how that works. So if we're working on our ag panel and we have a couple colors in that system, so I set this up and I choose these. Now, when I turn these colors on, it automatically populates those colors. So I could set a different price for each color. So I wouldn't be too concerned about the prices now because when we get done putting all your materials in the database, we can upload your prices in a mass file and you don't have to manually enter each price here so you don't have to go through this process uh, in the in here so it's it's much faster just to do the upload so we've just set up our ag panel you could say that and again if you choose not to use these panels or if you want to add your own you can easily click the plus sign here and walk through these exact steps fill this out so again it, it's it's probably much easier just to choose one of these and rename it and then the last part of this you know looking at this metal panel so since I've turned colors on, notice that it added a CC to the end. So that's just for Smart Build's internal tracking of that item. Since now there are two colors available, that means there has to be two separate SKUs. So each color would have its own SKU based on, you know, this, the first part of the SKU and then the color code, which we talked about in our previous video. So with, with this color code getting added to the end, it's adding BK and BL to the end, and that's creating the full SKU for that part. So if you look at this SKU and you say, well, my, my SKUs are a number system, I can't use this. That's fine, you can just leave this SKU as is and you could come down here and upload a vendor SKU. So maybe for black, it's two, three, four, five, six, that's your number. And for blue, the vendor SKU is two, three, four, five, seven, just an example. So if that is your vendor SKU, that is what would report on in the job. So when we go to a job and look at the job review and we look at our sheeting parts, we would not get this main SKU that's showing here. We would actually get that number that we just set up. So it would ignore this, this number here and leave it in the background and show the, the vendor SKU. So that's what vendor SKUs are for. Uh, we don't intend those to be used unless they have to be because it's much easier to maintain one SKU than it is maintaining 30 SKUs of, a, of one product in 30 colors. So it's much easier if you want to ever change that SKU or manage it to do it in this way than having to update each vendor SKU. But either way works and we support we support either way. So if you're if you sell your your metal in part lengths and you don't use this lineal feet, that's fine. You can also do that. And after you turn colors on or before you turn colors on, you may want to set these part lengths. So an example here would be turn part lengths on and maybe you offer an eight foot piece. So we set this to eight feet. We click add. We can add another length. Scroll down so we can add 10 feet. Click add again, 12 feet. And when you do this, 
maybe these are the three links that you you stock at your at your yard so these three links you could go ahead and update the price if you want maybe they're twelve dollars and you have a different price for this one and, and so on but now since you set up your part links you click colors it will automatically populate each color for each part link so it multiplies really quickly so you don't if you don't want to have to do this you know the long way you can turn your colors off until you get all your links set and then you simply turn on colors and it populates all the colors of each link so it's really easy to build out your your database that way so moving over into a standing scene panel maybe you have a standing scene panel you want to set up very simple process similar follow those steps change the skew change the description maybe adjust this width the thickness could be adjusted and again we have a different bump map we're using now the bump map is just what what it's showing that's what helps the 3d model render the look of that and if, if you look you can see the standing scene looks a little bit different than the ag panel so back to here so we, we could choose that bump map and if to set these here up you know you really have no idea what these look like from this menu we have a separate materials menu that we can go into and show that so if you go to settings and materials you can see you can see what, what those um, materials look like so going into sheeting and if i would find like my ag panel for example you can actually see this ag panel in 3d so if we look we, we've set this panel up and it used all these sizes that we had here and if you notice the color map is none these are these are just set to scale so here's where the bump maps coming from so if i change this to standing scene you can see how it changed the look and you can play around with these if you if you want to create your own custom look but by default we use the ag panel and if you have four ribs on your ag panel it's it looks something like this but if you want to increase it to five ribs you can do a 0.75 and it, it it stretches that so that is the correct scale to get five ribs on your panel so if you want to if you want to make your ag panel look like that you could do that so yeah that's a very quick um, overview of how the materials actually get their rendering but we'll go back into the setup wizard now to finish up other panels so we looked at an ag panel and we looked at standing seam you may have other products that you want to set up and each product type may be a little bit different in in how it gets set up in smart build depending on the orientation so when we look at a product maybe an asphalt shingle here you can see this is a little bit different as in it's showing a coverage width of six inches and a full width of 12. now that can seem a little bit confusing you're thinking why is the coverage with six inches if you think of a shingle it's going across the roof it may be 36 inches or 39 inches long so with this we have the orientation set to horizontal so it's saying that it's it's running horizontally across the roof and this is the coverage width or the this is almost a height if we rotate this so it's it's covering six inches on the roof and it's a full width of 12 inches so depending on your shingle size you can adjust this and it actually shows this overlap on the roof so we would get a six inch coverage and a 12 inch total panel size and again you can change the selling unit and and the quantity per selling unit and this helps you price them accurately so if your selling unit is a bundle your price is based off of bundles so your your price may be $30 per bundle and if you have this at $30 per bundle and the way it could be set up for bundle up here it, it still knows that this is how big a shingle is it's six inches in coverage and it's running off of this part length which is about 39 inches so I have a, a shingle and it actually draws this size onto the roof and then it knows that I have to sell it per bundle so if it's quoting a job and it comes out at you know five and a half bundles it would all automatically uh, price it to six full bundles it doesn't let you try to sell a half bundle so that's why we set shingles up to price per bundle instead of each because you don't you really don't want to break up a bundle when you're shipping it out so there's some products that you may want to sell as each even though they're they're priced in a bundle and you can change that to each and and just figure that out depending on the product so that's really quickly how you would do an asphalt shingle if we're talking something like vinyl siding um, very similar but still different where your coverage width again since we're doing a horizontal orientation meaning we're running the product left to right on the siding our coverage width is up and down it's actually a coverage high so you just have to remember that and then the bump map's been preset for you if you don't like how the vinyl siding looks or you think it it needs to be adjusted a bit you can always jump over into the materials tab 
like we showed earlier and scale that differently just by changing the bump map. So same, same case, you would add this to the system. You would have a vinyl system. You add the siding to it. You apply where it can be used, maybe on the walls and the wainscot and upper sheeting. You probably don't use it inside as a liner. And then you have your different colors and part lengths. So the part lengths for vinyl siding, I have it set to be an eight inch piece that is 12 feet long. And I sell it in boxes of 25. So this box of 25 is the price. So this may be $50. And when you do that, then your part number could be for a box. If you actually want to sell each, you could change this each, and then your price down here would be each. So that's how you would do vinyl siding. Stone and brick, very similar. Um, you're doing a coverage width. And in this case, I'm doing a full box of stone. So stone may come in several different panel sizes, maybe an eight by 30 panel, 32 panel, that's common. Um, and you can, you can choose to do that, or you may say that I'm gonna sell it per box. And what I did was I just totaled the square inches that a box of stone is, even though this is not the actual size of the panel. I'm, since I'm selling per box, I put the size in for a box and the selling unit is one. So when you do that and notice it's thicker, I set the stone to be thicker so it shows up in the model that way. You would have to have a stone system and then where it can be used and then your colors of stone and then your different prices per box and the weights. So anytime you select the stone system, it would allow you to choose any of your colors you have set up. So again, if, if you need to go back to watch the colors, you can, you can see how you can set up colors there. Now, if you're doing something like stone, one thing that, that can be a bit confusing is, well, how do I get this visual to show up on my stone? So it's a little bit different than the ag panel. We're not setting a bump map or a color map here. Since each color of stone has its own unique pattern, we would want to do that back in the colors menu. So if you go back to colors and you find a stone color, and again, we have a lot of these preset and we can help you add more. Um, it is a bit tricky to add stone colors. So we assign a color map to the color itself. And then that color map is what brings in this image that you're seeing. So that that's a little bit different than the ag panel itself. So moving on things like OSB, we OSB and plywood, it is, it is nice to set them up in sheeting um, because it can then lay this out on the, like on a loft floor, it actually shows the OSB um, in the visual. So we even have a color map that has the actual OSB look with, with lettering on it. It looks like it's unpainted OSB. So again, OSB, it's normally set up with the coverage width of 48 inches. Maybe you want to do a full width of, of a small gap. You could do that. The thickness could be here. The orientation could be horizontal or vertical. So depending on how, if this is going on a roof, you may have to put it in twice. You may have to have a product that's horizontal and vertical. Eventually, Smart Build hopes to allow you to turn your sheeting products either way in the job, but right now it only works um, according to this orientation. So it would it would do uh, running it four feet, uh, four feet up and, and eight feet across or nine feet across. The color map is this OSB with letters and then you would have to create a system for it. So if you want a system to just apply OSB to a project, maybe you sell a kit and you're only wrapping it with OSB and then the customer is doing his own thing for the rest. If you need to do that, you would want to have a system of just OSB. So you could easily select it and it knows to eliminate all the metal and just sheet the entire project with OSB. So you could do that. And then where it gets used, maybe you don't use it anywhere but for the floor sheeting or loft material, the loft flooring. So that's what floor sheeting would be. And then the part lengths, we have just a nine foot piece. We have one part length and then we have the price. So again, very similar, but still different than other sheeting parts. Um, drywall, very similar to OSB. You have your coverage width. If you want to run it the opposite direction, you could change this to horizontal or vertical. And I don't have, I just have no color map and no bump map. And I have no colors turned on. And if I want to use this in a job, I would just default it to white. If you wanted to show a painted drywall, you could you could turn colors on and it, it should render it as a plain white or a plain colored wall, depending on what you're doing. So you can price this per sheet um, for the, the same case. Smart panels, this is another popular item in garages and we've added a bump map for it. Again, the coverage width is 48 inches, full width 48. If that's your size, you could change the SKU, you could change the description again. You would need a system for smart panels. You would assign it to that system. And then you could even have, in this case, I have three different lengths of the, of the engineered smart panel. 
Maybe I have eight, nine, and 10 foot pieces. And then if you have these three links on any given job, when you select this panel to go on the wall, Smart Builder will try to use the best length with the least waste. So you, if you set it up with three different lengths in the sheeting, within a job, you couldn't limit it to only use eight foot stuff. Um, if, you, if you just wanted to be able to select eight foot items, you would need to have a smart panel eight feet, a smart panel nine feet, smart panel 10 feet, so you could change it. But if you wanted to use the best length possible, just set it up as all one item and different lengths available with different prices. So back to the back to the job, um, talking about you know if you if you're setting up sheeting parts and again when you set up your parts and you're not happy with the way they look, we have some other videos about just setting up the textures themselves, things like stone. Um, but but the main goal of this video is just getting the parts set up to the correct size and then tying that in with colors and systems so that when you're in a job and you choose a product and choose a product system you get the correct colors and then when you go to your drawings and if we look at like this front wall on this job we can see if we look at the sheeting drawing we can see how our stone panel how the sides were laid out we can see the 36 inch ag panel you can see how it cuts around the doorway and you get an accurate takeoff that way and the reason the overlap is important is for metal, you can see the actual lap there. Um, getting into you know the job itself and then how your panels get laid out. One setting that we want to talk about just for a second is in the wall sheeting. And again, this is kind of getting into the setup side, but something to note is we have a corner sheeting margin. So depending on how your panels are laid out and the exact size of the job, this corner sheeting margin um, lets Smart Build know how big this corner is. So if you, if you put in three inches here, then depending on where this panel comes out right at the edge, it would know that it's fine. It doesn't need another whole piece. So that's what the corner sheeting margin does. And that's kind of important to know when you're setting up your, your panel sizes and it all ties in together. So when you're done setting up all your sheeting parts, you can just click save. And if you would rather work in Excel, uh, again, you can download our sample file that we have here, you can review, you can review the parts that are in there and see how they're laid out. And if you want to work that way, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then re-upload your list. So again, this is a little bit tougher to know what fields to fill out. And that's why we, we recommend almost just working through our UI, even though it may take a little bit longer, um, you get each panel set up the way you want. And with the setup that we have, uh, as you set up a panel, you know, if you if you only have one part number and 30 colors, you know, it's, it's almost like 30 times, you know, it speeds up the process a lot by not turning your colors on until you're until you're done and you have that defined. So that's how the systems and the colors work together when we're setting up sheeting parts. Thanks for watching part four of the Smart Build implementation series, and we'll see you next time.